what's going on YouTube it is just my opinion and I am back for the new year with a new sports video I have not done one in a while I know in the past I've done my top 25 players in the NBA counting down who I think are the best 25 players in the NBA I didn't do one in 2019 so I figured I would do one now as season is already over halfway done uh, so here is my video. Now before I get into my list, I wanted to shout out a few players who just quite didn't make it, as well as the five players who uh, would have been right there had it not be for the other players on this list. So just some honorable mentions, uh, Blake Griffin, Kyle Lowry, Kevin Love, Zach Levine, John Morant, Kristaps Porzingis, uh, De'Aaron Fox, Chris Middleton, Andre Drummond, D'Angelo Russell, all guys who I think are amazing players, top tier players in the NBA, but didn't quite make the top 25 list. Now, 30 through 26, here's uh, the guys that I had just barely missing. So at 30, I had Brandon Ingram having an outstanding year this year uh, with the Pelicans, more than deserving of an all-star spot. Unfortunately, just did not quite make my top 25. Also, at number 29, Chris Paul, still a top-tier point guard in the NBA. The Oklahoma City Thunder have been a surprise team so far this year. However, I don't view Chris Paul as a top 25 player anymore in the league. I feel like a couple other guys maybe could have made an all-star spot above him this year. At number 28, Victor Oladipo, really only because of injury, uh, I think, just because he hasn't played a lot this year, there's a couple of guys that have surpassed him on my list to be able to get into the top 25. But he is 100% a top 25 talent. At number 27, it's Devin Booker. I really, really wanted to put Devin Booker on my list, but just unfortunately, I just thought all the guys above him uh, were better or, or having better years or have been better throughout the years. He just is not quite top 25 yet and at so number 26 just barely missing it is DeMar DeRozan I really really wanted to include him as well but I just think that based off of the success of some of the other guys on this list as well as the Spurs declining throughout the past couple years since he's been there not necessarily his fault in particular but I just don't think that he is as good as these other players. So now to start my list off, at number 25, I got Jason Tatum. First time making the list, his third year in the NBA, and he has really, really improved as a rookie. You could already tell that he was special, but he's really elevated his game, especially this year, and uh, with Boston being as good as they have been, with also Kemba Walker and Jalen Brown taking the proper steps as well. Um, in the right direction for that team. But Jason Tatum, I really think, is the future of that team and is going to be the guy who should be the future of that team. Number 24, I have Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz, who have been solid team uh, the past few years. He's always just barely missed my list. I think he's been more than deserving of making it this time around, though. Uh, defensively and and everything else just an inside presence definitely one of the best in the NBA and he's he's definitely expanded his game as well number 23 Bradley Beal shame to say he's just on a terrible team with the Wizards and there's really no way around it based off of John Wall's contract but he is a shining light there. One of the best shooting guards in the NBA. One of the best shooters and scorers, period, in the NBA. Just a shame that he's he's on the Wizards, a team that really nobody's really paying attention to. At number 22, I have my boy Donovan Mitchell. Uh, glad to say that he has made the list. And uh, he's really a, a Dwayne Wade Jr. to me. He, he reminds me so much of Dwayne Wade. He still has... Certain aspects of his game that he could definitely improve on and he could become a little bit more consistent in his game overall. But as a rookie, you could tell he was going to be special. Kind of took a step backwards this year, but I think he's taking the right steps forward again this year. Uh, as the Utah Jazz again having another great year. And it's mostly in large part because of him with the combination of Gobert. At number 21, I have Carl Anthony Towns. Still to me one of the best big men in the NBA, even though the Minnesota Timberwolves have been bad and disappointing but 
with the addition of D'Angelo Russell, it'll be interesting to see where the direction of the team is going to go, and I still absolutely think that it's not his fault that the team is doing as bad as they are. At number 20, got Ice Trey, Trey Young. Uh, even though it's only his second year in the NBA, and he kind of got off to a rock, rocky start in his first year, he has really revved his game up uh, within the second half of last year and all throughout this year. He has been absolutely amazing. It's just a shame that he is on one of the worst teams in the East and a team that nobody's really paying attention to, the Atlanta Hawks, because he is such an exciting player to watch and to see grow and develop. I really think that he is going to be one of the top point guards to come in the years to come. At number 19, we got Ben Simmons. Of course, he can't shoot, and we all know that, but he really excels in every other aspect of the game defense and wing stopping. He could also guard big men. Obviously, his court vision. And his ability to finish at the rim is next to none. Uh, obviously, if he expands his game past uh, just below the rim, he could be one of the best players in the NBA for sure. At number 18, I got Klay Thompson. Of course, he's been hurt all year, but when healthy, he is easily one of the best shooting guards in the NBA, both on the offensive end and defensive end. One of the best shooters, period, that we've ever seen. Uh, and I don't think that... He should be excluded from being in the top 25 list just because he has been injured for the majority of this year. At number 17, I have Pascal Siakam, who won a championship last year in Toronto, was the most improved player last year, and he has really excelled again this year. Uh, most people thought that because Kawhi Leonard left after the championship from last year that the team would kind of decline. But they are still one of the top teams in the East again this year. And it's large in large part because of Pascal Siakam. He has been absolutely outstanding. At number 16, I have Kemba Walker, uh, one of the top point guards in the NBA. And he has really proven his leadership ability. He had an outstanding year last year with Charlotte. But unfortunately, the rest of the team is just garbage and was garbage still is garbage but now that he's on a better team having a real chance to prove that he could be a leader and the best player on a possible championship contending team at number 15 i have nikola Jokic, one of the best centers on one of the best teams in the west in denver now i don't think that they have enough to be able to compete for a championship but nikola Jokic has has been through the past few years proving that he is one of the best centers in the NBA, can be one of the best players on a contending team, and is one of the more exciting centers, has a very versatile game, could go inside out, uh, post up, shoot threes, uh, great court vision and passing ability, just needs to improve on his defense and become not, not as soft. Uh, if he could do that, he's easily the best center in the NBA. Now breaking into the top 10, at number 10, Joel Embiid. Uh, although the Sixers have been a disappointment over the past couple of years, uh, it is most certainly not Joel Embiid's fault as he is still the best player on what should be one of the best teams and a title contending team in the East. And I mean, they were only one shot, oh, literally one shot away from making it into the Eastern Conference Finals and possibly the championship last year in my opinion, the best center in the NBA. At number nine, I got Kyrie Irving. Again, it's also unfair to kind of place him somewhere because he hasn't played much this year. When he has played, uh, he's been putting up amazing numbers. I think what has been his downfall, especially after last year, is just he hasn't been able to show his ability to lead a team into contention, like real contention, without uh, help and assistance from another top-tier player 
in the NBA. But, I mean, he's he's easily one of the best scorers and ball handlers uh, in the NBA currently. At number eight, I got Russell Westbrook. Now, I think that Kyrie is a better scorer and ball handler than Russell Westbrook, but I think Russell Westbrook excels in almost all other areas of his game on defense, his playmaking ability, his leadership ability. I would even argue that he's a little bit more efficient than Kyrie Irving is. Uh, Triple-double machine that has taken his talents now to Houston, has been with Oklahoma City all these years, and uh, although not putting up the triple-double numbers, uh, he's having a lot more success this year, playing alongside with James Harden as far as not having the burden of having to do that in order for his team to win. At number seven, I got Steph Curry. Again, this is a guy who is top five player caliber. However, we just haven't really seen much of him this year in order to be able to really put him in the top five players of of 2020, in my opinion. But of course, uh, champion, MVP, one of the best shooters, if not the best shooter that we have ever seen, has really revolutionized the NBA and how it is played today based off of just his shooting ability alone. At number six, I got James Harden. Now, his defense has improved over the years, but I still don't think that James Harden's overall game is worthy enough to put him as a top five player in the NBA currently. Also, because I think his team throughout the past couple years has digressed as well, which doesn't help his case. But still, if not the best scorer in the NBA, easily one of the best scorers in the NBA. Just amazing the numbers that he puts up night in and night out. And now it's time to crack the top five. At number five, I got the Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo, who has just developed his game more and more and more each year. And I can say now that he is easily a top five player in the NBA. Won the MVP award last year, uh, almost made it to the NBA Finals last year, and is looking like, to me, I think the easy choice from the East this year would be the Milwaukee Bucks, and it's all because they are led by Giannis Antetokounmpo, one of the best big men in the game, period. He's been improving on his shot, and that's really the only weakness in his game, Offensively and defensively, he's just a beast. At number four, I got Anthony Davis, who is, in my opinion, the best big man in the NBA. Offensively, defensively, there's very few flaws in his game. And he's one of the more consist he's one of the most consistent big men in the NBA. Um, and now he's playing on a real championship contending team alongside LeBron, of course. But He's really been able to showcase his his talents and his ability with the Lakers this year, and I think he's improved on all fronts. And he's been able to really stay healthy throughout the course of this year, which is something that he has been having issues with over his entire career, is just maintaining his, his, his health and his injuries. At number three, Kawhi Leonard, NBA champion of the Toronto Raptors, could possibly be now. The champion for this year on the LA Clippers, one of the first guys ever to possibly win three NBA championships and be an MVP of the championships for three different teams. I don't know if that's ever been done before. I don't think that's ever been done before, but it's more than possible with this guy. Easily one of the best, if not the best, two-way player in the NBA. Really not more I could say about him, except he just needs to work on his laugh. (laughs) At number two, I got Kevin Durant. In my opinion, when healthy, he is still the second best player in the NBA. Uh, You just can't guard him. There's, um, There's no guarding him. He is impossible to guard. And defensively, he especially... Uh, Once he got to Oklahoma, or once he got to Golden State, he really elevated his defensive game. I just think he's one of the most complete players in the NBA. And if not James Harden, Kevin Durant is easily the best scorer in the NBA, pure scorer. But at number one, I still have to give it to LeBron James. Surprise, surprise. Uh, He's just... I don't know how he's not slowing down by now with the amount of years that he's been in the NBA. Uh, I mean, I know he's still fairly young. He's in his, his, his low 30s, 33 maybe. But 
he just doesn't seem to be slowing down, and he just still remains the mo- one of the most consistent players night in and night out, and uh, one of the best players and well, the best player in the NBA. So that is my top 25 list. Let me know if you think there's anybody that I forgot to shout out, if you think that my list is, is incorrect, who you would switch in and out as far as spots goes, if there's guys who you thought I should have included in my top 25 but didn't, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this, just let me know. Give me recommendations. I'm always looking for recommendations as far as sports videos. Again, remember, this is just my opinion. And see you later, YouTube.